In today's video, we're going to talk about ways that you can maximize your rental portfolio, your flip in a way that not only you are maximizing your rental income, but also will help you save money with Angle Sam. Hello and welcome to Nova Rice, your channel for financial education. So today we're at another hotel room and I actually wanted to create this video to share some amazing ideas that I found that not only can help you improve the quality of your rental portfolio, call it long-term rentals, call it Airbnb, or even a flip so that you can maximize the most amount of money possible without having to you know, reinvent the wheel, so to speak. So let's just get started with what we see right here underneath the bed. So it might seem like it's very simple and common, but look what happens when the bed feels some type of motion. The light goes on, right? So it might seem something that is very minor right now because we're in broad daylight and uh, you might not notice the difference, but imagine if you're actually sleeping in the middle of the night and you need to wake up to use the restroom, right? And so typically what happens is that you're either gonna have to grab your cell phone or turn the lights on, which happens to be brutal, especially if the room is dark and you're like halfway still asleep. So when you wake up and you're trying to find your way and walk around the room having lights that illuminate the path for you and at the same time it's not as invasive to your sight it does create a different experience because it doesn't fully disturb your sleep because although you want to use the restroom chances are you want to come back into the bed and be able to continue to sleep after you're done using it. So the experience doesn't end here. It's not just with the lighting underneath the mattress. So if you follow me to the restroom, you will see that they have a very similar dynamic right here into the bathroom because, and I don't want to move too abruptly because I wanted to, to actually see the light. So the bathroom is actually really, really dark right now, but imagine it's three o'clock in the morning and you want to go in and use the restroom. The minute you step in and it senses you coming, voila, the light actually goes on. So if you're halfway asleep and you walk into the bathroom and you turn the lights on like this, what do you think is gonna happen? Your reaction is gonna be something like this. Because it's too much of a shock, it's too bright and it will get rid of your sleepiness just like this. So chances are when you're done using the bathroom, you might not be able to fall back asleep right away. If you do, congratulations, but in my case, I wouldn't be able to. So having a dark room with, you know, something very simple that illuminates the path, I can still find my way, use the toilet, still wash my hand without feeling that bright light in my face and you know getting rid of my sleep now while you're still here i also wanted to show you something else that um you know they can improve on so to speak not that they will listen to me but you know i'm a small business owner i have a rental portfolio and i do care about preserving my furniture um everything that I have renovated i want it to remain as good of a quality as possible i want it to look as new as possible and it has to do with the sink so what's the issue with this sink it looks all pretty but then you will probably notice that it's relatively small compared to the size of the countertop not a big deal you might not even notice a difference but in terms of use this tiny sink right here can help you make it or break it for you and here's why so let's say I wanna come in, I don't wanna wash my hands. I got the soap right here, right? And then I wash my hand, nicely done. And then I wanna rinse it again. So see what happens with the water, right? I cannot pull my hand out. I have to keep it in here. So guess what's happening? All the water is flipping all the way back here. So unless you're a mindful guest like i am you will probably do this and the only reason why you think about doing this is because if you are a property owner you can tell that the water that landed here can eventually end up here and that's painful to even watch because i'm thinking gee that's gonna cost me a lot of money why because 
the more water you let it sit here, the more this is gonna wear out. And typically in construction, they use fillers around here, whether it's silicone or whatever you wanna call it, they use a clear filler so that way they keep the humidity away and they prevent water from falling on this, you know, the small openings that you see on the side. Because what do you think is gonna happen if more water? So imagine this is on the other side. So water is falling down here. And as it's falling down here, yeah, probably the stone or the countertop will remain a structure and it's gonna look nice, but what do you think is gonna happen once it hits the wood? At the start of it, um, you might not notice the difference, but imagine this happening every day. Water falling in every day for a year, for two. Things are gonna start wearing and tearing faster than you think. The wood, it's gonna start opening up because of the moist, because of the humidity, and it's gonna cost you a lot of money. So. The trick with the sink is actually having something slightly bigger, not in your face big, but big enough so that the faucet right here can come out a little further out into the center so that when you're watching your hand, let's say we have water flowing, you can watch your hand over here and not necessarily over here having it splash it back in. Like the water will fall right here in the middle, straight back into the sink so that way you don't have to worry about the situation right here where you have to bring the water all the way back in, right? So um, that's just only a small change. Probably getting something that it's bigger will cost you maybe a hundred or $200 more. And before you flip out and you think, what, another 100, 200? Think about this having to be replaced every single year. Think about the cost of the labor that you're gonna have to pay to have someone come out here just to fill this up, right? You might think, oh, well, it's only a one-time thing. That person probably charged me like $10 an hour, 20, 30, depending on the area that you're in. But imagine doing this for every single room in the hotel, or imagine doing this for every single Airbnb that you have. Not a good idea. And that's only on the cheap side, because if you have to replace this, this is gonna cost you a lot more than $10 an hour. It's gonna cost you having to replace the entire furniture and paying for the installation and also paying for this piece of furniture to be removed that it also costs you a couple of hundred dollars and it could all be prevented just by planning from the very start and implementing a nice size faucet that could prevent water from splashing all over okay so that's just on that side now let's just walk out of the room and let's talk about decor right because we all love hgtv and we all love talking about the decoration and how beautiful things look but there's more to it it's not just the decoration so um, I think it was last year that I released an episode talking about hotel rooms and things that we can actually learn from it. And the, there was a troll online that talked about, oh, your quality of the videos are decreasing. What does a hotel room have to do with real estate at all? Well, my friend, if you're still watching, it has a lot to do with it. And if you're not here, that's fine because this video was also created to the new people who are tuning in and the existing followers are tuning in because they wanna learn something new, right? So the reason why we want to pay attention to what's happening in the hotel room is because everything in the real estate business is connected, okay? So people, come to the hotel rooms and they want to get a feel um, of comfort, right? Even though they know they're in a hotel, they still want to feel relaxed because, you know, they want to come here and sleep peacefully and go back the next day to, you know, do their sightseeing, to do business, whatever you want to call it. So there is a lot that goes into the decoration that tries to resemble homes, right? An actual bedroom. Same thing goes the other way. A lot of Airbnb builders, a lot of house flippers want to get some ideas as to what's working, what helps them work with small spaces. Because as you can see, hotel rooms are typically small. So if you're having a property that you're working on a flip and you need ideas, creative ideas to enlarge the room visually, this is where you will actually come to get a, your ideas. And that even get me started with the whole accounting part and the depreciation, which in a minute we'll get over. So overall, the size of this room is actually a rectangle. So you will see something like this. So when you have something that looks like a rectangle, it just looks weird. It's not aesthetically pleasing because 
most of the things are concentrated in this space where the bed and the desk is, right? So you want to create a feel that you're having more space uh, instead of having just space like this, you want to create a feeling that the room is actually wider so that way you can have a nice square. So one trick to do is to have a darker color in the wall that still hasn't changed. That's what they call it, the accent wall. And they paint it in a dark color so that way you can bring the walls from all the way over there and create a more intimate space. Now, in terms of talking about the walls that are on this side, you want to figure out a way to how to create more depth so that way the room looks larger. And this is how you do it, right? So you built out frames just to create a certain level of depth and make this room look, you know, like full the eye, so to speak, right? You wanna make it feel bigger to your eye, although you're not necessarily creating more actual physical space, but it provides you the illusion. Once again, this idea is implemented by hotels, but it's also implemented in house flipping because I've seen it around and more and more houses are using this type of frame just to create more space, right? So aside from the idea of space, we noticed that uh, vintage is actually coming back. So you're gonna see more and more furniture that has um, metals that are um, of copper color. Sometimes we've seen something that is more of a champagne color, so to speak. So now we're seeing more trends and um, to blend uh, what's vintage and classic with something that is more modernized. And the good news about this is that it lasts you longer. It's more, you know, um, scratch proof, so to speak, I like to think. Uh, and not only they carry that along the furniture, but they also do that on the hardware as well. So if we come all the way over here, we are noticing that even the lamps are made out of metals. And the beautiful part about this is that it's coming down from top to bottom. So we have eliminated the need to actually use tables in the equation because what happens when you have a lamp just sitting in here? You know, people can knock it off. Maybe they're halfway asleep. Maybe they forgot there was a lamp there. And accidents can happen. You can break a lamp and then you have to buy a new one, replace it, yada, yada, labor. But with this, you're actually eliminating that component or that accident from happening and you're creating additional space. So um, we've seen the metal across uh, all hardware. So we have the mirror over there, we have the lamp, and we also have another lamp over there. That's that. So we're seeing a granite countertop here or a course. I'm not sure what this is, but let's just go with granite for example sakes. And uh, so we have that over there and it's the same stone being used on that side. So this makes the furniture more durable. Uh, it's more resistant to scratch. If you come to think about a, uh, a wood furniture, chances are sometimes depending on what you're putting on top of it, you can mess up the surface, but this one is actually harder and it's one way or the other easier to clean up because all you gotta do is just to wipe things up and um, it lasts longer, right? Now, on to the fun part, let's just talk about numbers, right? But before we do that, let me remind you to hit the like button right here at the bottom so you can help others like you who are looking for information of this kind, right? So um, one last thing before we start talking about accounting, I want you to pay attention to these um, piece of furniture right here. Um, Overall, when you look at it on the outside, it looks like, oh, it looks great. It's a nice cabinet, but it's a lot more than that. And uh, so over here, once you open the door, you will see a fridge that is sitting in here. But then if I go on this side, voila, how beautiful this is. So you have the coffee maker and everything going in there. Uh, there's a safe if you want to use it. Uh, so there's a nice use to it. It's a preserved space. It looks nice. And then you can still appreciate the beauty of this, right? The microwave wasn't here. We actually requested it because we have the tendency to order too much food when we're traveling. And then uh, we don't want to throw it away. So we're always eating leftovers for breakfast. So uh, that's what the microwave is. The hotel was actually nice enough to help us accommodate that. So now let's just jump into the accounting side of things. So remember what we last talked about. Let's assume we have this cabinet right here. I'm gonna do my best to have a nice drawing. And here's the doors, the legs. So this cabinet right here cost $1,000. With this cabinet that cost you $1,000, you can actually do a lot to save money and taxes. And here's how you can do it. So first, let's talk about wear and tear, right? Because everything gets worn out. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. 
um, because Uncle Sam understands that, the IRS understands that, and that's why they build that into the tax code so that you can partner up with the government once again and make things happen, right? So here, let's say you have a cabinet and you want to make sure the IRS is aware that you have wear and tear on everything that you put in your rental portfolio. So what you have here is that through wear and tear, the IRS is going to give you something that is called depreciation. Yes, that's correct. Depreciation not only works on real estate, but it also works on furniture. So when you have a rental portfolio, your buildings, your house get depreciated over a span of 27 and a half years. When you have furniture, you can actually take a depreciation over the span of seven years. Okay, so now we have depreciation. And next thing that the IRS wants you to take advantage of, it's something that is called a deduction. And in this channel, we call this a smart expense, right? Why is it a smart expense? Because you're spending money, but that expense is generating you a deduction on your taxes. And it's also generating income from you because you're using this to add value to your property. Okay. So now that we have these two components, and uh, mine that we've heard about these. Now let's just do some math to help you put things into perspective. So let's say, for example, you generated $20,000 last year and in rental income from your Airbnbs, verbal, short-term rentals, annual rental, whatever you want to call it, right? Or even a flip. So you're generating $20,000. We're just going to use rental income here as an example. And then the IRS will allow you to actually deduct $1,000 from your taxes. So now we're going to do this through expenses, right? So that's a deduction for your smart expense. And because of depreciation, you can also create another expense without necessarily having to spend money. So you, what you're going to do is that you're going to take this $1,000 that you see here on the screen, and you're going to divide that by seven. So let's just use our calculator here really quick. And we have 1000 and we divide it by seven, that will be 100 $42.85, just to round it up, right? So now we're going to call this depreciation. So now your taxable income will be based on a total of $18,857.15, right? So instead of you having to pay taxes based off of $20,000, now you lower your taxable income because of the expense, because of the depreciation, and now your taxable income has been reduced to $18,857.15. But things don't end there. You can actually even get more creative than that by talking to your accountant to see if there's a way for you to expedite this depreciation, right? And that is called an accelerated depreciation, okay? So what does an accelerated depreciation mean? It means that you can work with your accountant and take the full depreciation in the very first year. So we had this example right here and where you decided to take the depreciation over the span of seven years. So that means that every year for the next seven years, you can take a $142.85 depreciation all the way until you reach zero. But you don't have to do it that way. You don't have to do it over the span of seven years. You can actually take the entire cost and depreciate it all at once in the first year to accelerate it, depreciation. But that's something that your accountant is gonna have to help you with. And how would that look like in the books, right? For your taxes. So let's say, once again, we have the example of $20,000 that you generated in rental. There's that smart expense. And because now you're aware of accelerated depreciation and you talk to your accountant about it, now you get to deduct $1,000 because of the depreciation. And now your new taxable income will be $18,000 a year. So you have the option between doing this, taking the depreciation of the span of seven years, giving you this taxable income a little bit higher, $18,857, or doing this option and where you get to take the full depreciation and 
just deal with the $18,000. Which one is better? It depends. It will all be based on what your needs are. Maybe you need to create a more expensive this year, or maybe you don't need it. And you say, you know what? I can just take it over the span of seven years, which is completely fine. And now I want to learn more about you. Tell me, have you taken this into consideration? Have you applied depreciation? Did you even know that you could take depreciation in your portfolio? And if you have, let me know which approach did you take? Did you go for the accelerated one or did you actually take the one over the span of seven years? And if not, let me know. I would like to find out. And while I still have you here, check out this video right here. That's going to help you complement everything you just learned today. And until then, take care. Bye-bye.